Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Web Design with WordPress 101 course. Today we'll explore how to create pages using WordPress. A page is different than a post in that a page is meant to be static, while posts are usually time sensitive and subject to change. Pages are usually the preferred method for delivering content that you don't intend to change very frequently. If you'd like to promote discussion or continually add new content to your site, posts may be the preferred method to do so. Some websites use a combination of static pages and posts to deliver content to their viewers. The setup for your website will depend largely on the objectives of your website. Now in order to add a new page to your site, you can click the Pages tab on the left-hand navigation menu from the WordPress dashboard. This will load the All Pages tab, which is the area that allows you to manage your existing pages. From here, you can either click the Add New button at the top of the page, or click the Add New tab below the Pages tab on the navigation menu. The Page Editor should look similar to the Post Editor. You can add a title and content in the same fashion that you would if you were creating a post. The previous video explored a lot of the options that are also present on the Page Editor, so we will not re-examine those options now. Instead, We'll focus on some of the things we didn't cover in the creating and editing posts video, as well as the options that are unique to the page editor. On the right side of the editor, there are two tabs, visual and text. The visual tab is meant for entering plain text content to your page. The text editor shows the HTML markup associated with your page, depending on the formatting options you have selected. You can also enter your own HTML in the editor instead of using the format options under the visual editor. Switching back and forth between the two options will give you an idea of how HTML is utilized to format your content. If this isn't the first time you've worked on the current page you're editing, you should notice an option under the publish box on the right hand side called revisions. This option allows you to look at the different versions of the page you have published and saved in the past. At the top of the revisions page, you'll notice a slider. This slider allows you to move through the progressions of your revisions and will change in size depending on the number of revisions you have published. Move the slider to display the different revisions of the page. You can also use the previous and next buttons to navigate between revisions. The two columns on the bottom of the page represent the different revisions of your page. The more recent revision will appear on the right while the older revision is present on the left. Red highlighted text represents content that was altered or deleted from the next revision, while the green highlighted text represents content you've added in the new revision. If you have multiple revisions, you can also choose the checkbox near the top right labeled Compare Any Two Revisions to compare revisions out of chronological order. This will give you two points on the slider that represent the current versions of the page you are viewing. You can choose to restore a previous version of your page by clicking the Restore This Revision button. Once you've returned to the page editor, you'll notice a box on the right side labeled Page Attributes. The options in this box allow you to change some options as they relate to your page. The parent option allows you to select the hierarchy of the page you are editing. If you have other existing pages, you can choose to place a page under a pre-existing page. In the default theme, this places the page in a drop-down menu that appears when you highlight the page you selected as the parent from the navigation menu. The template option allows you to select a pre-configured layout for the page you are designing. The types of templates available will depend on the theme you currently have running on your site. The order option allows you to manually rearrange how the pages will appear on the menu for your website. Your pages will be ordered alphabetically by default, but you can use this field to rearrange the order in which they are displayed. The toolbar at the top of WordPress can be useful to help you navigate back and forth between your site and the pages you are editing. If you are looking at a page on your site while you are logged into the dashboard, you can click the Edit Page tab at the top to bring up the page editor for the page you are viewing. The same tab will allow you to go back to the page after you are done editing. You can also easily add pages from this toolbar as well by clicking the New tab and selecting the item you wish to add. 
Let's recap what we covered today. Posts and pages provide content to your viewers in different ways, but have a similar editing interface to help you create them both. The visual and text tab allow you to switch back and forth between content without HTML markup and content including the markup. You can use the text tab to enter HTML directly into the editor if you prefer. This option is also available on the post editor when you are creating and editing posts. The revisions field included in the publish box allows you to view previous versions of the page you are editing. This can be useful, especially if someone accidentally deletes the content on one of your pages. This field is also available on the post editor. The page attributes allows you to control how and where your page will be displayed on your site. You can use it to create submenus for your pages and to change the order of how your pages appear on those menus. The toolbar at the top of the page will also make switching between editing and viewing your pages easy. Well, that's it for today's class. Thanks for watching on behalf of E3, and stay tuned for the next class in the series.